Have you ever found yourself puzzled by somebody's behavior in your life and wondered if they're simply just guarded and afraid of being vulnerable or if there's actually something bigger at play? Perhaps in this case, narcissistic personality disorder. Well, if you're uncertain and you wanna do a deep dive into the psychological world of what it actually means to have narcissistic personality disorder and the key differentiators nine of them between somebody who is a true narcissist versus somebody with fearful avoidant attachment style this is the video for you by the end of today's video my goal is that not only do you deeply understand exactly the characteristics and traits pulled directly from the dsm-5 that make up a narcissist but also have those key differentiating indicators to understand the difference between that and fearful avoidant. So whether you're questioning a romantic relationship, a family relationship, or a friendship, you can actually find certainty. So if you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. My name is Thais. I am the founder of the Personal Development School and post daily content here on YouTube um, to try to share a lot about the subconscious mind, attachment styles, and how to really thrive in our relationships. Now, I actually put a slide together here today that I'm going to pull up to demonstrate these nine major criteria. So the nine criteria themselves are number one, we have this grandiose sense of self-importance. So where you may see like a, a fearful avoidant attachment style having a human experience where they can have a moment of grandiosity, it's much more a part of the narcissist's actual personality. So for example, you are going to see the narcissist has this grandiose sense of being more important than other people wherever they go throughout all types of different situations, whether it's in the workplace with friend group, family relationships, you know, going to a restaurant on the weekends, like this is going to be congruent throughout because it's a personality characteristic of the narcissist. Whereas the fearful avoidant attachment individual may have a moment of grandiosity, but more often than not, they're actually going to be functioning from a place of feeling insecure or inferior, particularly because they have these very glaring, I am unworthy core wounds, um, feelings of not being good enough or unsafe to really express themselves. So if anything, they're going to take up less space where you're going to see this grandiose nature of taking up so much space, particular to a narcissist. Number two, a preoccupation with fantasies of unlimited success, power, brilliance, beauty, or ideal love. Now, what you'll see here as a general rule is that fearful avoidant attachment styles, they may have fantasies about, you know, things related to growth or empowerment, but we really get this idea of unlimited success through a narcissist, unlimited love. You know, I had a client come in one day years and years ago who was basically dragged in by their partner and they were really struggling in a relationship. And so they decided to come in for sessions and the person who was clearly a narcissist started the session by telling me about how great he was, how successful he was, and all the basically unlimited success that he was going to have to come and then continue on to talk about how nobody's ever felt love like him and his partner have felt love and nobody can understand how great their love story is. And then went on to talk about how nobody can understand what it's like to overcome what he's overcome and how brilliant he is and how intelligent he is, despite his, you know, lack of ability to be supported and all the things he's accomplished. And, you know, you could tell quite early on that this person probably had narcissistic personality disorder because of the fact that they were so preoccupied with this part, you know, to here, this, this constant need to prove these things. Um, whereas, you know, his partner was very much there to do the work and unpack things and talk about problems and challenges. And he really didn't want to show or demonstrate basically any weakness. And so was much more, um, concerned with talking about how powerful and smart, um, uh, he really was. So, and, you know, it's funny because narcissists are often quite clever individuals, but they often lack insight, right? They lack emotional awareness, emotional intelligence in certain cases, um, particularly around some of these, these things we're going to see here, like a lack of empathy that we're going to get to later. 
So number three, um, this belief that this person is special and unique and should basically only be around other special, unique or powerful people or institutions. Um, you'll see like a very common sort of dynamic here of this idea of social climbing, right? Just trying to um, get ahead, make sure that they're only associating with other really intelligent, powerful people rather than actually trying to build more genuine human relationships based on vulnerability and authenticity and true connection. Um, our next one here, number four, this excessive need for admiration. You will see a narcissist constantly need admiration, and they will often get kind of pouty, frustrated, or even um, quite volatile if they don't have this constant admiration in their relationships, um, both socially and in closer, more emotionally connected bonds. Our next one here is a sense of entitlement, you know, this idea that I should always be treated better than other people. And what you'll see here is when we're looking back to the fearful avoidant attachment style, you're going to see fearful avoidance really um, coming from a place of not having that grandiose sense of self-importance, not having these like huge fantasies. But when it comes to this idea that I'm special and unique and should only associate with special and unique or powerful people, that is not a fearful avoidant characteristic. Fearful avoidance tend to actually really want to connect with people who feel emotionally safe. And they try to really build authentic connections through vulnerability and transparency in their relationships. So they're much less about social climbing and social status. When it comes to excessive admiration, if anything, a fearful boy will struggle to trust somebody who's giving them too much admiration and it may make them feel like they need to pull away. Of course, a fearful avoidant will appreciate some degree of admiration, um, a compliment, something kind, even if they have a hard time receiving it, but excessive admiration will not bode well for a fearful avoidant attachment style. And when it comes to this piece here, the sense of entitlement, you'll generally see that a, a narcissist, they have this sense of, I should be treated better than everybody else. Everybody should basically know who I am and treat me accordingly. Whereas you'll see a fearful avoidant attachment style, if anything, they're putting everybody else on the pedestal and they're essentially not showing up to take themselves into consideration enough next to everybody else in their lives. So they tend to be basically the opposite of entitlement. They tend to have a difficult time actually taking up space. I just wanted to jump in and share something exciting. We are actually, for the first time ever, running a promotion for 60% off of your first month at the Personal Development School. And this gives you access to all of our courses, including all of the courses about different attachment styles and how to navigate those relationships together. So for example, if you're a full avoidant with a dismissive avoidant, how to really work through that relationship, all the different challenges, how to show up. We also have courses on boundaries, communication, healing your attachment style to becoming secure. So many different courses in there. But on top of that, I'm in there three days a week doing live webinars. So you can come in, ask me any questions that you have at any time, and I will be there to support you. And I'd love to chat with you. And we actually have trained coaches and facilitators who are in there all other days of the week, except for Sunday. And there are community support events through them. There are webinars with them, smaller classes. So you have so much extra support in really integrating all of the materials and work in there. And I will say, as excited I am about the YouTube videos that we get to put out every single day, uh, just because of the length of the courses and content, they're so much better than our YouTube content because you can go into so much more depth. There's workbooks, worksheets, and tons of support. So if you want to check it out and actually get 60% off of your first month for only $39 at the Personal Development School, I will put a link to access that down below. We'll see a narcissist trends towards having interpersonally exploitative behavior. Um, and so in this particular case, you may see that if you're avoidant, um, we'll go to the right to not manipulate people, but we'll also be quite wary of other people manipulating them because often they come from a history or background of that as a potential possibility. Whereas a narcissist may actually think about how they can manipulate somebody and tend to sort of be premeditated and more strategic about it. When it comes to the lack of empathy, generally fearful avoidance tend to over empathize, if anything, whereas um, a narcissist actually struggles to empathize. They may be able to sympathize a little bit or at least express sympathy as a means to an end um, to sort of get their own needs met. But truly empathizing with people is something that narcissists don't naturally really have much access to. And when we get to the last two here, we generally tend to see narcissists have 
a component of constantly being preoccupied with envy, either being envious of others or believing other people are envious of them. And that is not something we'll see with a fearful avoidant attachment style. Although they may feel envy, there will not be a preoccupation with envy. And more so, we'll, we're likely to see um, a sense of jealousy or possessiveness of their partners in relationships more than envy of other people in their lives and a sense of comparing their lives to other people's. Last but not least, um, this dynamic of demonstrating arrogant or haughty behaviors. A, a fearful avoidant will generally be everything but arrogant. They may have when they're triggered moments of expressing anger and frustration in maybe a condescending or kind of angry way. But arrogance, again, these are personality traits that the narcissist tends to have. Now, you remember, we only have to really have five of nine to actually characterize somebody as a narcissist, but you're really not going to see many of these here at all for a fearful avoidant attachment style, particularly as personality traits. Now, I do want to say, if you want to do a deeper dive into narcissistic personality disorder and healing, if you've been around a narcissist and actually removing yourself from a relationship more permanently from somebody like this, um, you can check out the Overcoming Narcissistic Abuse course. I will put a link for that down below. And um, you will be able to gain access to that so that you can move through that and really deprogram essentially any of those painful imprints that a narcissist might have left. Things around betrayal or intermittent reinforcement, or even these forms of kind of addic addictive traits that the narcissist brings into our lives because of all of that intermittency that tends to be there. So um, if you do want to do a deeper dive, and this is something that you have been through, you can definitely check that course out. And thank you so much for watching and for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. And I can't wait to see you in future videos.